probably giving you a good taste for the market and how you want to invest your cash. Um, but I think you know, for, for generally people, you know, there's there's an element of them who do want to take a, a, a bit of higher risk. We talked about the money box app on on the previous videos, and, and again, that's another tool that you can use to manage your funds a bit more effectively. And for that money that you're not going to do anything with, it at least gives you a chance to make a little bit extra. Yes. Yeah. And then when you start getting to the point of like wanting to buy houses and buy cars or right in cash, you've got a good chunk of funding there to do it. You might not buy a car right in cash. You, you might think, you know, I can put £5,000 down for a new BMW and I'll repay, you know, £400 a month. But if you're making, you know, well, it's, it's, you it's, uh, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> but, um, but if, if you're making a salary that will allow you to manage those monthly repayments of £400, then there's no risk to you. But if you are, you know, buying a car, you know, with thirty thousand pounds of cash that you've inherited, that car's going to drop probably by half its value mm. within it's the first year. Possibly not the best use of that thirty thousand. No. So it, it it just depends on on what suits you. The the best advice I would I would give any of the students is to read as much as they can on these things whenever they're presented with it. Don't ever take it at face value. And we were talking about this before about certain companies will present themselves and say this is a good product mm. for you, but. I remember the, the clearest one for me, um, this is a long time ago, this was personal loans. And I thought about a personal loan when I was 21, because all my mates had taken them out. And I, and I did a quick, you know, calculator type um, assessment of, of what I'd be paying month by month on the back of this personal loan. And it was almost as much as the amount I was going to borrow. And it was, it was absolutely crazy. Uh, Wonga were another example of a company who were a payday loan company, but were charging extortionate amounts of interest to their customers. Mm -hmm. So people will find themselves really, really trapped in this debt. And it's just another example about how you can see something and think, oh, I can borrow £10,000 with them. I don't have to pay it back straight away or I'll pay it back when I get paid. But ultimately, you're trapping yourself in the yeah. long term. So the more that you read and the more that you understand these things, and, and also don't be afraid to go into a, a branch or a bank and ask a stupid question or what you feel is a stupid question. If you don't understand a term or an abbreviation, it doesn't mean that you're the silliest person on the face of the earth it means that no one's ever clearly experienced yeah. to you. And, and we as a bank take that very personally as well, where we want our customers to feel that we're being as open and transparent with them as we can possibly be. I think even just you know chatting with you about it here, Carl, it's, it is quite a minefield, isn't it? When you yeah. think of, you know, talks about credit cards and overdrafts and the, all this technical jargon, which I keep you know pulling you back on for explanations <laughs> of, but there's so much jargon mm -hmm. and a lot of it needs to be demystified. So. Yeah. Thank you for demystifying that for us. So <laughs> that is the end, ladies and gentlemen, of episode three. And uh, we'll see you again next time. Bye for now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>